Vipassana 57 with uh, capital V. But is it Sirimago or is it? Oh, yeah, oh, it is there. Yep. Sirimago, okay. All right. Yeah, sure. I, I got the easiest one. <laughs> Okay, so they're all without names. Oh, no, it's from at the top. Okay. Okay. Did you get the YouTube thing? No. I have the YouTube, but what is the other YouTube? Good afternoon, everyone on YouTube. We are here for a special ceremony. I have the honor of offering Venerable Fuente Yukidamo um, a robe. And I also have some others here who will be participating and sharing some words. I've also collected letters from many of you who wrote in and showing their, showing your um, gratitude, and I'll be reading them. Uh, if you also would, uh, if you haven't submitted your letters and would like to say anything, you can go ahead and chat, um, type in the chat, and um, one of our volunteers will try to read out as many as they can. Oh, I'll give me slow. I want to speak up louder. Speak up louder, thank you. Um, okay. I hope this is better. <clears throat> I'm going to turn this over. Turn the volume off. How's the volume now? Much better. Awesome. Thank you. I know this isn't typically what's how um, you get your robes, but uh, everyone here at Sir Momolo and all the volunteers would like to offer you this robe. Yes, that's the right one. <laughs> it was donated by Tina.
I'm going to um, just read out some letters from some of your followers. We have uh, Hassan. He says, thank you, Bhante, for changing the course of my life and showing me what is truly essential. May you be happy and healthy. And from Tim, uh, Bhante was my first teacher in Buddhism. That is a very important position for me to honor, for anyone to honor for that matter. He adds his own flavor to my unfolding over the last decade. I just cannot be more thankful with much gratitude. This is from Austin. Wisdom is counterintuitive to the ignorant mind, and hence perhaps inherently difficult to teach. Thank you for not only taking up the challenging task of teaching the Dharma effectively, but also by living the Dharma and teaching by example, sadhu. The value added through your work is transformative and immeasurable. This is from Jim Crowley, Venerable Dhamma. Please accept my sincere gratitude for your many teachings on YouTube and for being my teacher for my online course this year. Your teaching and guidance were so incredibly helpful to me in the most stressful year. I cannot thank you enough for this. I also thank you for the chance to help edit the Ask a Monk booklet series and in moderating the Saturday YouTube meditation sessions. Both opportunities have helped my practice and given me a, ch a chance to help others as well. Regards. And from Mo, dear Bhante Tadamo, thank you so much for the great Dhamma that you have spread on YouTube and on Discord. <clears throat> the teachings have helped me to understand Buddhism and meditation to a deeper level. It has left a great impact in my daily life, to which I am very thankful for. Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. This is from Julie. I'm happy to have this opportunity to participate in your offering this year. I would like to express that you have made a positive impact on my life. I'm living my life with a lot less suffering now and for this. I'm so thankful to have you as my teacher. I'm certain you have made an important difference in many people's life, more than you may realize. Your strength, dedication, and resilience, as well as your overall humbleness, are quite remarkable. They make you the wonderful person you are. Wishing you Meta and all the best in the years to come. This here is from Tabindu, Awali, Kishanti, and Arujana. Arujana. Thank you. Venerable Yutadamo, we are we are ever grateful to Venerable Yutadamo for teaching us mindfulness meditation from the very beginning. It is a great opportunity that you are available to guide us through this journey of samsara, no matter where you are. Thank you and much merit to all of you. From Sean. Hi Bhante. Thanks for all your invaluable teachings and support with meditation practices. Sadhu. This is from Calvin. The gift of the Dharma excel all other gifts. Dhammapada 354. I'm thankful to Bhante for his precious teachings of the Dharma, which guides beings on the path of freedom from suffering. May all beings be free from suffering. From Ariel. I would like to thank you again for the opportunity to study with you. Your teachings of the wisdom of Buddha and Mahasi Sayada is always with me in my daily practice. This is the last one from Sanda Mali. Venerable Yutadamo is a treasure I found in the internet. Live long, Venerable Yutadamo. Sadhu. Christiana, would you like to I would like to uh, echo a lot of what we've just heard. I, I'm very grateful uh, in daily life for um, the depth of which I've been able to learn from Venerable Yutsudamo. Um, I guess life experience, 
uh, brought me to the West End Buddhist Temple, and Bhante Saranapala had Venerable Ita Devil as a guest speaker. And then I, I uh, did a little research to find him, and it was worthwhile because it's been about three years of very good guidance, even though it's been indirect for a lot of it. And, and that's a beautiful aspect of this whole thing, is that you're able to do it at your own pace, as well as directly under. So thank you very much. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. For myself, right, John, I'm grateful and honored to meet one of the Canada-born monks here. And I'm grateful to be able to learn his teaching, his guided meditations. I learned a lot from him. It gives me a pathway of happiness in my life. Thank you very much, Mante. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <coughs> Bhante, this is the second rope offering ceremony I've presented to you. Last year, I didn't even know what I was doing. I had just started the at-home course. And after a year, I've taken the foundation and the advanced course through probably the most difficult year of my entire life. I can't express how grateful I am because I don't know if I would even be here without the teachings of the Buddha, your, your wisdom and your words just guide me so powerfully towards the cessation of suffering, and I just cannot thank you enough. Thank you, Bhante. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Is there anything online that you can see that you would like to read? Uh, Christina Gulko. Thank you, Bhante Yutadamo. The last five years, you have guided me through your kind videos. I became very aware of the importance of Dhamma. I thank you so much for this life-changing experience. This is from Eagle Heart Deflas Fester. Thank you, Bante. How about lots of more short PD wise video of 10 minutes or so? Thank you for joining us here on YouTube, and thank you for Yutadamo for accepting this unconventional ceremony. Is there anything you'd like to share one day with your followers? Yeah, we can make it faster. Okay, Bhante, speak up. Well, the thing about receiving praise is it's one of the worldly dhammas. It's like fame. We're talking about fame. You have to be very careful with it easy to misunderstand and give it a significance it doesn't actually have. They blame those that are blameworthy, they blame those that are not blameworthy. Nati loke anindita. There's nobody in the world who is not blamed. And the same goes with praise. You can't predict it. And with fame and, and all of those things. But gratitude Gratitude is a very important quality. There's a famous saying in Thailand, I don't think it's from the Buddha, it's from a famous Buddhist monk. Um, he said, Nimitam sadhu rupanam katanyu katuvedita. It's the sign of a good person. One who the appreciation of, the recognition of what others have done for you, and the inclination to respond with gratitude and to act in gratitude. So I think as Buddhists we can agree that gratitude is a very important thing. It's not something to be expected. I don't expect any gratitude or any, any response. We, we of course don't. Uh, in, in Buddhism, 
the, the benefit of goodness is goodness itself. The greatest benefit for goodness is as a support for our spiritual development in our path to find peace, happiness, and freedom from suffering. But gratitude is a part of that. Recognition of what others have done for you is a recognition of truth. When we recognize our parents for what they have done for us, even though we may have mixed relationships with them, and they, of course, might not be perfect people either, but the recognition as a part of the puzzle, as a part of the equation of what they have done for us, and our teachers, our benefactors, as monks, our supporters, the recognition. Someone that who doesn't recognize that as a part of the equation doesn't see the truth. And so it does have a, an important place in, in our practice. So I appreciate that and appreciate the work that it takes for you all to summon in your minds this recognition and the wholesomeness involved and the, the happiness that comes from recognizing good things. Uh, more, the recognition of the benefits that people get from meditation practice is a greatly inspiring thing. Uh, one thing we've always encouraged people to do is to express the good that they've gained through the practice, how it has benefited their lives. Uh, we used to have a book um, where people would write and we'd say, please write. What, if you got some benefit from the practice, write in the book. If you didn't, you don't have to write anything. That's okay. But they would often write, oh, thank you. You were so helpful. And, no, that's not what we want. We're not interested. I don't, don't want you to praise me. This is not looking for praise. What it's for is it's an inspiration. The, be the greatest, the greater than even expressing gratitude is the uh, expressing the truth of the benefit of what you have gained from the practice, because that's an inspiration for others. So many people can hear and are excited and encouraged, inspired by that. Uh, so that's something always great to hear. As far as offering a robe, it may not seem like much. Offering cloth, offering a piece of clothing, may not seem like a lot, but it in fact is something that's very hard for Buddhist monks to find. Practically speaking, this is a very important gift because we cannot wander for rags in like the time of the Buddha. In the time of the Buddha, cloth would have been, discarded cloth would have been about as common as discarded plastic today. So we can't go around collecting plastic, but in the time of the Buddha, there would be, uh, from a funeral, when they when a person died, they would wrap them up in a cloth and throw the body in the charnel ground. And the monks would go to the charnel ground and pick up the discarded cloth, tear off any part that was already rotten, but stained was okay because you could, you could wash that. Uh, or after giving birth, they would use a cloth to wipe away the blood, and then they throw away the cloth. Monks would pick that up as well. But cloth was used for so many things that rough cloth, cloth of many different kinds, was more easily obtainable. Nowadays, it's not so easy. So, uh, we still keep the tradition of not actually offering the robes into the hand of the monk. The best way is to place it as though you're discarding it in recognition of the importance of uh, the symbolism of, of the, the robe, what the reason for wearing the robe in the first place is to give up our attachment to sensuality. As a practical tool, it's quite useful in that way. It, well, it's practically useful as a piece of cloth as any clothing is. It's practical to keep us warm, to keep us cool, practical to cover our bodies, to keep us from being distracted by our nudity. Uh, it's good for warding off 
insects, uh, wind and so on and so on. But it's also practical as, as something different from ordinary clothing in that it keeps us from the attachment to beauty and to fashion, to status, while at the same time giving a, a new sense of status. Wearing a robe is a constant reminder of what you are because of the symbolism of the robe. So it practically, the robe is useful, but symbolically it's also very useful as well. It's useful for those seeing a person wearing the robe. It's useful to, for the person wearing the robe because the robe is not only a symbol of Buddhism and a Buddhist monk, but it's also a symbol of renunciation. So it's true that the robe is meant to signify that one is ordained as a Buddhist monk. It's meant to signify a similarity with the lineage or a uniformity with the lineage. But more importantly, going back to the original reason why the robes were worn, the robe is meant to symbolize renunciation, leaving home and all that it means, leaving the world and all that that means. Most importantly, giving up pursuit of worldly affairs. It symbolizes the recognition of the meaninglessness of worldly pursuits, that they don't satisfy us as far as we, as far as we go with them, we never seem to be satisfied. And through our experience, we realize that they're unsatisfying. And so this is like a flag, the Buddha said. It's like our banner. We hold it up to say, to, 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 to present our, our determination. It's a recognition of our understanding of the unsatisfying nature of worldly affairs and that we belong to the lineage of those who have strived to free themselves from the attachment to such things, strive to become free and independent of the vicissitudes of life. So, the offering of robes is really the most iconic Buddhist offering there is. It's also not easy to give. You can't just go to the store and buy one. Oh, I think I'll go and give a, a, a monk's robe to a monk. Then you have to find a monk in the first place to give it to. This robe was actually hand sewn by someone who uh, got the cloth, the right color, the right size and made it explicitly for the purpose of, of giving it uh, as a monk's robe. I know because I was told that she had made this and uh, was, coming, was going to have it offered. So I appreciate that very much and want to express how great a thing it is in that it really is the iconic gift to give. It's a, a, a means of expressing one's determination to be a part of the Buddhist tradition. Uh, it's an expression of one's inclination towards renunciation. It's often an expression of one's desire to eventually give up the worldly life themselves. So people who are interested in becoming monks will often give robes. It's something as a monk I found has been a great way to reaffirm my own or one's own as a monk, inclination to, to, to be a monk or determination, uh, one's uh, contentment with being a Buddhist monk by offering robes to others, any robes that we get, offering them on to other monks or gathering people together to offer robes. So yeah, I'd like to express my appreciation and, and wish for all of you a long and healthy and happy life uh, that you may have the strength and the, the goodness in your heart to continue on and fulfill your determination to be free from worldly worldly bonds 
uh, and be free from the suffering that comes from unrequited desires. Thank you all for coming and, and wish you all peace, happiness, and freedom from suffering. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.